Okay, so here are my ideas about the, the question when is it good to speak or not to speak, to engage or not to engage. This is very random. I've first of all got a few different scenarios, situations, and I'll go through them. And I'll be talking about different ways we can react. And then I'm going to go through a second list, which is different ways we can react. And there'll be some overlap. And then some things to remember at the end, which goes back to the, the session we had about 10 tips for Catholic communicators. Who was there for that three weeks ago? Yeah, some of you. Okay. So the first section is common situations and they kind of escalate. So you can imagine where I'm going. Um, first of all, general conversation, right? And I've called this, there's an opportunity to speak, right? So it's not someone says, what do you Catholic think? You're just, you're just talking and, and uh, you just, you're just aware there's an opportunity where it could go into faith or morals or, or your faith in a light, gentle way. Um, the classic one, of course, for a Catholic is someone, you're, you're with a group of friends and the conversation is, what did you do this weekend? Um, and you say, you know, do you say, oh, I, not much? Or, or do you say, um, I went to see some friends? Brackets at church. Um, <laughs> do you say, oh, I went to lunch at Newman House? As if it's a, a random hall of residence without a church attached to it. Do you say, I had an amazing weekend, I went to Mass on Sunday morning? Um, and there's a hundred other ways of speaking about your life and your time and look this is completely up to you isn't it? it it's it's for you to be open it depends on how well you know the person is it a lovely light moment to just share your your life and faith in a normal relaxed way or is it better not to bring up as we were saying in another session this week not to bring up the deep question of your religious identity on your first date, you know, you can put that off to date number three or four um, Finley's laughing at the back there, sorry I've named you now um, to feel very free but, but to be open um, if possible, I'd say the default is to talk about things naturally as you would to a, faith, to a friend or family member that you trust yeah? so the default is if you went on retreat this weekend, in this summer, did you have a good summer? Yeah, it was a great summer. I did X, Y and Z and I went on this wonderful retreat. Um, how was your weekend? Oh, it was, it was okay. I had a lot of work to do. I went to Mass on Sundays. You'd say that naturally, all things being equal, wouldn't you? So try and be natural. Um, but there might be reasons when you don't want to bring up faith or you don't want to self-identify as a Catholic in, in a group of strangers so be light, be gentle, be open um, err on the side of speaking naturally in other words, not hiding things but if you need to be a bit subtle or, or not, you don't want to go into that stuff that's fine, that's okay but, but be open and pray next common situation someone asks you a direct question right? It, it again might be very natural you're with a group of friends it's the beginning of the year someone says oh I'm a Muslim and they turn to you and say oh do you have a religion well you, you've got to say yes probably haven't you yeah um, I hope yeah so that's a natural conversation about faith and it would be silly not to answer it um, but there's other situations that are a bit greyer you're just talking and and someone says, oh, what do you think? And, and you don't know whether to say, well, this is what I think without saying any more. Or, well, actually, I, I'm a Christian, I'm a Catholic, and, and I believe. So you're self-identifying, you're expressing your faith as a Christian, as a Catholic. Um, you don't know whether that will help the situation or not. And that's slightly tactical. You, know, you don't always have to say everything. There's no obligation always to say everything as long as you're never lying. 
right so obviously the first rule is we never lie um, but you can have a restrained silence sometimes um, usually if someone asks you a straight question give them a straight answer usually but sometimes you might think this isn't the moment so you might try and duck or change the subject but never lie um, and if someone is actually asking you directly they usually want an honest answer and you owe it to them so don't be afraid and don't be shy that's actually quite an easy situation isn't it if someone's talking and asking the harder one is maybe you're in a group and a topic is coming up and you're kind of going round well what do you think what do you think um, and you need to work out again be very free be very prayerful is it going to be helpful to the conversation for me to bring this up or would it be better just to be a, a bit quieter and, uh, and stay back a bit third situation there's a, com a bit like we just heard but this is not too dissimilar there's a conversation about faith or morality going on it's not directly involving you no, no one's saying what do you think about this then because you're a Catholic you're just there you're in the pub you've just had a lecture and there's five of you sitting around you, you're doing medicine you've just had a lecture about whatever it is embryo research or something and the discussion is going on and it doesn't directly involve you well again you need to, to have a you're free um, um, I keep saying this and I will keep saying this about a number of situations um, there's no obligation always to say everything that you know so the question is what would help this situation what would help these people right now and again a default is to be natural to talk naturally to say well I hear what you're saying but I do think there's another side here um, to bring up faith if you want well I'm actually a Catholic and we believe that the embryo is is sacred is a human person in that situation um, people are passing this is not uncommon in student life passing drugs around now you can just decline and be friendly yeah some of you have probably done this you can say actually no I don't think this is right and no thank you so you've made a point but you haven't gone in heavy you can, you can leave you can say well I'm a Catholic and, and we believe it's wrong to take illegal drugs um, so you're kind of really opening up and inviting and challenging uh, so you're free you know again the bottom line is never lie and the second bottom line is never do anything immoral so don't take the illegal drugs yeah and don't lie and say it doesn't matter um, but again you have options there and the key thing is we'll come to it in the end always be thinking if you're, if you're acting out of love the question is what is going to help the situation what is going to help these people my friends is it going to be effective me speaking here or not and if it's not it's ok to be a bit more silent um, although we'll come on to some situations where sometimes it's not okay to be silent but sometimes it is and I've said here the example here is the topics come up you don't know the whether to enter in well if there was a topic about sport or shopping yeah, you would just speak very naturally wouldn't you and you'd say what you think in a natural way and, and the default is you would do that about faith or morals what I'm saying is don't overanalyze this as a default speak and be yourself and be honest but sometimes tactically you might think this isn't the moment this isn't the time and you, you find another way well I've kind of said this the fourth situation there is a discussion but you're involved so you just are involved or three people have said well I believe embryo research is ok well what's wrong with getting completely drunk well what's wrong with prostitution if, if someone is, is fine with that whatever the moral topic is or religious and someone says well come on what do you think Bob right well you, 
again all things being equal be simple and honest and frank and say what you think just as you would about football or shopping or politics or um, don't get too complicated about this um, I'm not giving you tips here on how to present your argument that was three weeks ago wasn't it we're talking about whether and how to enter into certain scenarios and my advice here is if there's a deep hot topic coming up people are asking you what you think be honest <coughs> and do the best you can to explain what you believe why you believe it um, if you can't give perfectly satisfying answers don't worry always the tip is do the best you can and then stop so don't do nothing because you think you haven't got a perfect answer on the other hand don't do the best you can and then do even more as in be, be, be ranting, be, be lying be making up arguments um, argue with integrity put your point across lovingly, gently, truthfully um, if it involves your faith and you want to speak about that fine um, but maybe you don't need to bring that up you know, maybe you've got, you can just say this is why I believe that lots of drug taking is wrong this is why I believe prostitution is wrong um, but you might want to bring in faith and, and to work out is it going to help, is it appropriate yeah, ok the next, well again this is all overlapping I've given this a different heading but there's a hard, deep, serious discussion going on it might be one to one it might be the group at the pub it might be your classmates it might be in your cat sock and there's Catholics with different opinions about things yeah maybe they're controversial maybe the discussion topic is controversial and we've got that big list of controversial topics that we're going through uh, well I would say for you if this is the discussion you need to try and enter into it it's hard to stay silent isn't it so not to repeat myself just be open, be natural um, try and do the best you can to put your point of view to put, express what you believe is right all the tips that we had before about listening respectfully to the other person not trying to just knock people down presenting things humbly and truthfully but not, not necessarily trying to win arguments just trying to present good arguments yeah? so do the best you can next scenario people are critical, aggressive or prejudiced either about you directly they're slightly different or about the Catholic Church just as we heard in a scenario yeah? so let's take, they're slightly different but maybe they've, they say so there's a group and someone makes a joke about something to do with faith they, they mock Jesus they mock Catholics they, they give some implicit assumption that all Catholics are idiots or all Christians are stupid for believing in God or, or anyone who, who believes in the pro-life cause, cause hates women and must be an idiot um, so there's a group a group mocking going on yeah? or someone attacks you and, and says well you must be an idiot or how can you believe that nonsense or oh I heard you were a Catholic um, <laughs> and they do this face to face or they do this on Facebook um, how do you respond to aggression prejudice um, yeah aggression and prejudice well there's no single answer yeah um, sometimes you will want to just in that group situation sometimes you might say this is not the moment to rise to the bait it's, it's not the moment to stand up these, these people without being patronising about them these people are just not in a position to hear anything um, it's not going to help I need to keep my head down 
Um, sometimes you might feel, look, this is just horrible. Um, no one's ever going to defend the Lord or defend the church or defend other Catholics. I need to say something. And you might, there's different things you can say. I'm sure you've experienced this. You can do it in a jokey way. You can say, well, actually, I'm Catholic. Um, you know, you're not being confrontational. You're just saying, well, there might be another point of view here. You know, you're just flagging up, hang on, we're not all on the same side here. Um, you're, you're gently putting a doubt into the discussion and flagging up. Um, sometimes you might express your hurt personally and say, look, actually, I'm a Christian and I find that really offensive, what you're saying. It's possible to do that. And sometimes that is effective because it just stops the conversation short and you're not arguing, you're expressing your own hurt. Um, sometimes, not in a jokey way, not in a hurt way, you might simply take the gloves off and say, right, let's talk about this. So you're not saying, oh, I'm Catholic and I feel hurt. You're just saying, hang on, you're all assuming everyone thinks like this, there is another point of view. So sometimes it is good to step up and argue. Back to all of our principles earlier on. Wisely, kindly, lovingly, intelligently. Um, and sometimes, as I said, you just need to be silent. Um, sometimes, gently with friends, you can say, look, this is a bit too personal. Can we just change the subject? Yeah. And there's other ways, but just be aware that in that moment when there's a nasty bit of conversation going on or someone confronts you, you've got different options and you need to decide quickly and prayerfully what's the best way instead of just reacting or just staying silent Do you see the key thing is you're quickly and prayerfully deciding what is the best way to react instead of just automatically hiding which isn't good or automatically reacting aggressively and defensively which isn't good you're making a decision Well, sorry, I did put two. Yeah. So the next one is teasing and bullying, um, which I've talked about this. I won't go over it all again. I was trying to say there's, there's two slightly different scenarios. There's, there's the group expressing its prejudice and there's the group or an individual actually teasing you or bullying you. And sometimes you need to just run away, as in if this is happening, maybe this person is not your friend or this group is not a good group to be with maybe sometimes if they are good friends or they don't realise it's happening you need to um, again express your hurt look this is very hurtful for me I'm not saying you'll understand I'm not trying to persuade you I'm just saying this is hurtful can we change the subject and sometimes you need to call people out and say, look, you are being prejudiced. You might not realise it, but this is hurtful and prejudiced. I'm feeling bullied here. You might need to say that for yourself, or you might need to say that for someone else. Here's a different scenario, right? Someone tells you something important or difficult about their life or their moral situation classic things here I'm pregnant I don't know what to do or I'm pregnant and I'm going to have an abortion next week or look I'm taking drugs and I don't, want to, don't know what to do or I'm really depressed and I'm feeling suicidal or I'm in this lovely relationship with this wonderful man who is married you know so there's a, there's a genuine conversation an openness either they've said it very casually to you they're not seeking advice. They're just, oh, well, no one would say casually, I'm pregnant, I'm going to have an abortion. But they might say casually, I've met this wonderful man, thank God he's left his wife and we can fall in love with each other. So it might be casual when they're not expecting a response or it might be uncasual, they're confiding in you and they are expecting a response. What do you say? Well, if they're talking to you, give them an honest Christian answer yeah 
if they're talking about adultery, abortion, um, illegal drugs, um, shoplifting, you know, if they're talking in a light-hearted way or a serious way, you have a moral responsibility not to let them think that something is okay if it's serious and you know it's not. Right? Normally. I'll give you a couple of situations where it, it might not be the case. But normally, if a friend is talking to you honestly about a difficult moral situation, normally you owe it to them to say, look, thanks for confiding in me. You know, I'm sorry you're in a difficult situation. Um, and, and I don't mean to lecture them. I just mean lovingly as a friend to talk it through and say, well, look, this is what I believe to be right. This is what I believe to be the best possible way forward for you I really hope you don't end up in situation X, Y or Z in other words you're supporting them, you're not being judgmental of them as a person but you are helping them to know right from wrong in a situation where all their friends might be telling them otherwise and they genuinely might not know yeah so if they're confiding in you the default is to talk support, love but make it clear to them what is right and wrong. If they're not confiding in you, but it comes up, that's difficult. Because you're not sure whether to speak in a way that might be unwanted or might be wanted. Yeah? And this takes prayer and an instinct. Is it a moment to, to speak? Um, there's no right answer. But just obviously, the more serious it is, and the more there is an opportunity to speak, then the more you would want to try to speak. Yeah? What I mean is, if you're in a big group of friends and someone says, oh, I've just moved in with my boyfriend, yeah? And it's a completely secular group of friends, um, you don't always need to stand up and say, I'm sorry, did you know it's morally wrong to cohabit before marriage? Yeah? I'm just saying that because sometimes a Christian thinks that I always have a moral obligation to speak morally when there's a serious moral issue. You actually don't. Right? You don't always. As I said, if someone's confiding in you about a deep issue, I would say generally you do have an obligation. Um, if, there's a, if there's an honest conversation going on and someone's asking your opinion, you do have an obligation. If it's a friend, no one else is talking to them, you're the only one there, you probably do have an obligation to bring it up at a loving time. But in that example, maybe it is not the moment and it's to do with degrees of relationship. Yeah? If your sister tells you this, you absolutely have an obligation to speak and love and pray and talk. But if your friend's 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 friend brings it up at a wedding dinner with 300 people there, you, you might not need to. You see, it's about degrees and possibilities. And Okay, there are lots of situations, right? Now I'm going to go through the next thing. And I've, I've actually said all of this. In my, fir my first list is common situations now just to systematise it a bit I'm going to go to another slide now which is called your options and it's to summarise what I've just said but in any situation you've got these options right? think of all the situations a friend confiding in you a group of drunken strangers your family when you go home at Christmas a group of Catholic friends in Catsock when you're disagreeing, a group of completely secular, pluralistic friends on your course. Yeah? In any given situation, these are some of your options systematically. First, you bring up the topic. Right, that's just one option. Haven't mentioned that yet. You're with friends and you think, you've been to an apologetics course like now, and you think, well, actually, this is a great moment to bring up a topic. So you can lovingly, naturally, just as someone else can choose to talk about Tottenham Hotspur winning in the football yesterday, amazingly, yeah, you can choose to say, oh, I had a great weekend, I went to Mass on Sunday. 
you can choose to say um, oh I've, it's been great we went to Kassok this weekend um, to, to a retreat you can choose to open a conversation with someone what, what did you do this weekend or oh hi it's nice to meet you um, what's your hobbies what college you at do you, do you have a faith background you, you can bring up conversations if you want to be brave and, and in a natural way seize the moment right in any given scenario apart from the ones when you have a moral obligation to speak and I've given you some of them yeah. your best friend says I'm pregnant I'm going for an abortion next week um, what do you think you have you cannot remain silent then can you yeah? as if it doesn't matter I'm not saying you have to lecture them in an abstract way about abortion I'm just saying you need to love them to support them and say look can we find another way how can I help you you do know how wrong this would be and how damaging for you it would be and, and what, a ha- what a tragedy this would be so there are some situations where we have an obligation to speak but many there's my second option silence keep your head down sometimes that's okay yep. a drunken argument at two in the morning about gay marriage or um, embryo adoption or um, nuclear war or whatever the topic is and you just think no one's listening this is not the time to have a conversation let alone to say I'm a Catholic you just go with the flow you leave um, or someone makes a, a stupid joke it's a bit anti-Catholic and you just think this isn't worth it it's not the moment ok you can be silent sometimes sometimes next option you can have a gentle involvement in the conversation you're just going with the flow you're not saying anything deep but you're not opting out like some kind of lemon there sitting there with your arms crossed saying this is terrible you're just talking and that's okay sometimes next option is you're going a bit further right the conversation's getting into religion or morality and as I've said in a very light natural way you share what you think you, you talk about your faith yeah I'm a Catholic this, and I hope this is the default there's a topic light or heavy religious or non-religious and you feel free enough and trusting enough to be yourself and talk and you should normally be free if, if, if you need to say more say more if you say less it just goes in that direction the next option is actually you think I need to step up a bit and you I don't mean you stand up and give a lecture but just here's a topic and you want to say something like well, well hang on this, this is what I believe this, this is what Catholics believe or just this is the case yeah you're, you're talking about um, whatever it is let's go back it just is there in my mind for some reason embryo research someone saying oh it doesn't matter it's just an embryo and you're saying well hang on let's think this through let's talk about being human about when life starts about the rights of persons about whatever you want to say um, someone's talking about um, legalising hard drugs you know wouldn't that be better I'm not even saying what your opinion is but you think right let's talk about this let's just talk about the pros and cons let me present my argument Um, someone's talking about God and you want to say well hang on there are good reasons to believe in God you don't just sit there nervous thinking oh what if they know I'm a Christian yeah you stand up you have an honest argument as you would about anything else and you consciously decide okay I'm not going to sit on the back row I think this needs talking about you're confident enough to talk and you do that and you see where it goes and you're talking about the topic intelligently right sometimes do that now sometimes it's, it's not the moment or it's too heated or you actually don't know what to say but you, you need to express why it's important to you 
And I've put that under the heading here of personal witness. Right? So, you're not sure what to say. Um, someone's attacking religion, right? All religious people are idiots. You, you don't feel it's a moment to get into an argument about the existence of God. You don't feel it's a moment to get into an argument about the history of the Catholic Church and how on balance the Church has done more good than harm. Right? It is not a moment for objective argument, but someone's attacking religious people or you're on the spot and instead of giving an objective argument, you give a personal witness. In other words, you, you say something like, look, I'm not very good at explaining this, but I'm just telling you, this is really important to me. My faith as a Catholic is really important to me. It's helped me to grow, it gives me real peace, uh, it gives me direction in life. I've met some amazing people. I do believe in, I believe there's a God, I believe in Jesus, I believe in his church. I'm, I'm not the best person at explaining it all, but I want you to know that this is important to me. You give a witness to it. Um, someone's saying, oh, for goodness sake, you're dating. Why don't you sleep with each other? You're, you're so obsessed, you Catholics. You're so frigid. Yeah? And again, you might not have the deep theological theology of the body chastity arguments to explain why you believe sex before marriage is wrong. But you might want to give personal witness and say, look, I just believe this is important. Um, and I've been trying to live this and I'm really happy and it's a struggle sometimes but I believe that it's a real blessing to me and my boyfriend or me and my girlfriend um, I know you might not agree with me but just I'm telling you it matters to me do you see there's two strategies here one is to argue objectively another is to witness subjectively and they're both possible and they're both strategies and you need to work out what to use when. The next option is to subtly change the subject. Yep. It might be a one-to-one -one conversation, it might be a group, it's getting too hot or too difficult, no one is listening, everyone is drunk, yeah, or honestly everyone hates you, yeah. Um, <laughs> Everyone, no one is, is listening to anyone or no one is listening to you in particular or you're just feeling really hurt or you're feeling really tired um, or it's just pointless. Yeah? So you can sometimes, I've already said you can keep silence, you can sometimes try and change the subject. You can, did I have this as the next topic? Yeah, okay. You can just subtly try and change the subject you can do that in whatever way you want right but the next point is you can sometimes explicitly change the subject explicitly you can say sometimes look guys we've been talking about this for an hour it's great we're not getting anywhere let's change the subject you can say look I know we disagree I just find this really painful to talk about because it matters to me can we just change the subject you can laugh it off and, and literally you can change the subject but don't be afraid of sometimes stepping up and saying that and that's my last point you can leave the room and I mean it yeah sometimes the discussion is so aggressive or so anti-catholic um, or I keep bringing this up but it's very common so drunken that it is not sensible to stay in the conversation it's better for you and for them for you to leave. And I don't mean you storm out, although that is an option. You can just say, look, this is getting ridiculous. I'm really tired. I'm going to bed. Good night. Or you can just say very subtly, look, it's been a great evening. Oh, I've got an essay to write. Um, or I must ring my mum. Yeah? Now it's four in the morning. Why are you ringing your mum at four in the morning? But you can try, yeah, because she's in Singapore, so it's okay. Yeah? <laughs> So just that is an option. Yeah. So there's my two lists. Different scenarios and different options that you can use in any given scenario. And again, to underline, 
the, the point of thinking like this, of having a half an hour session like this, is so that you know you have options and you consciously, prayerfully choose what is the best option. I mean with an instinct, I don't mean you overanalyze. Instead of just doing the two reactions which in themselves are not good, which is to argue or to hide. If you've chosen to argue because it's a good time, great. If you've chosen to hide because it's a good time, great. But don't argue because you're an argumentative person or hide because you're a cowardly or a terrified person. They're not good options. The best option is you have the confidence in yourself and in your faith to, to wisely and lovingly choose what is going to help the situation best. And if you do that, do the best you can, you've done everything God could want of you. Yeah? If you've tried to have an argument and it hasn't worked, well you tried and you thought it was worth it. If you've stayed silent and you've thought, there's nothing I can do, okay, but you can come back to it if, if you feel it wasn't the right decision. And last, remember, these are just bullet points from three weeks ago. Right? Always remember, but I'm glad to say this, at the end of this talk any situation be kind and gentle now if you're with best friends and it's getting a bit heated that's okay but always be kind and gentle remember that nice phrase from Catholic Voices shed light not heat you're trying to bring light truth love joy a good point rather than aggression, anger, hurt, etc. Remember to love the person you're talking to. That's the motivation. As you're sitting there and you think, oh, what should I do? Don't think, how can I defend myself? How can I defend the church? That's not the point. The point is, how can I help the person I'm talking to? Do you see, it changes everything. <laughs> And then you make the decision, what's going to help the person, not what's going to help me. Remember, as I've said before, it's about witnessing, not winning. You don't have to win. You don't have to get the better of the other person, trip them up. You don't have to, in this group, in this one-to-one, -one, come to a conclusion where they agree with you. You just have to present the argument, the truth, lovingly or present your own witness lovingly and that truth that light that witness will speak to them it might speak to them in the moment it might help the argument to move forward but in the long term it will speak to them and stay with them Ooh. right five remember to pray right to pray for your friends before you see them in the morning. To send up a quick arrow prayer in the heat of the moment. Right? Oh, what should I do? God, help me. Literally, say that in your mind. Jesus, help me. Holy Spirit, help me. And then afterwards, when you're on the bus home, when you're in bed thinking, oh, what went on this afternoon? Pray for the person you were talking to always prayer and last of all remember do the best you can and leave the rest to God that's all you have to do you do not have to be Thomas Aquinas you do not have to be the greatest debating society person you don't have to be a saint remember do the best you can you not the best your neighbour could do do the best you can and leave the rest to God. If you make a mistake, it doesn't matter, as long as you've done the best you can. And remember, the perfect is the enemy of the good. If you always think, I've got to have the perfect answer, you'll never speak. <coughs> if you always think, I've got to be really brave and confident, you'll never stand up. Do the best you can with the person that you are, and God will do the rest. Okay? Thank you.